In the previous chapters, you probably learned that we can write f equals ma with respect to rectangular coordinates and normal and tangential coordinates. In this chapter, we write f equals ma with respect to cylindrical coordinates. So we can say forces added together in the radial axis is equal to mass times the radial acceleration. Forces added together in the transverse axis is equal to mass times transverse acceleration. And forces added in the z axis is equal to mass times acceleration in the z axis. Let's review the basics first. Imagine there is a particle moving along a path. From a fixed point, we can say the location of the particle by drawing a radial coordinate. If we then draw a fixed line, we can show the angle with respect to the radial coordinate using the theta symbol. This should be familiar to you. If not, please check the description below for the basics of cylindrical components. The new part we look at in this chapter is when a force is applied to the particle like this. When we apply a force like that, there needs to be a normal force. But the question is, where does the normal force affect the particle? The normal force is always perpendicular to the tangent of the path. So imagine we freeze time, and at that location, we draw a tangent. Then the normal force is perpendicular to that tangent. The frictional force always acts along the tangent in the opposite direction of the way the particle travels. In some questions, we will need to calculate the angle to find the direction where normal and frictional forces affect the particle. For that, we use something called the psi angle, and it's represented by the psi symbol. To find it, we use tan psi is equal to the radial coordinate divided by the derivative of the radial coordinate. So this angle represents the angle between the tangent and the radial coordinate. There are two possibilities for this angle, which is that sometimes it will be positive and other times it will be negative. If it's positive, all it means is that we're measuring it in the positive direction of theta. If it's negative, we're measuring from the opposite direction to theta. When we do examples, this will make more sense. Example number two in this video uses this angle. Lastly, you should remember how to find radial acceleration, transverse accelerations, and acceleration in the z direction using these equations. And you should remember how to do time derivatives. If you don't remember, please check the description. There are links to videos that goes through these concepts step by step. Let's get started with some examples, and by the end, you should be able to solve most, if not all, the questions in this chapter. In this question, we need to find the force that is exerted on the can. So the first step in these types of questions is to figure out the radial and transverse accelerations. For that, we need to use these two equations. Now from the given information, we see that we need the first and second derivative of our radial coordinate, and we also need the angular acceleration. So let's do that first. Let's take the first time derivative of our radial coordinate. Now we will take the second time derivative. In the question, it says the angular velocity of 0.5 rads per second is constant. That means the angular acceleration, which is one derivative of the angular velocity, is zero. Now we need to find the force when theta is equal to 30 degrees. So let's plug in 30 degrees along with the angular velocity and acceleration into our radial coordinate equations. Now that we have those, we can find the radial and transverse accelerations. Let's plug in everything we found. First, for the radial acceleration. Now for the transverse acceleration. Once we have the accelerations, we can move on to drawing a free body diagram. The radial axis will be along the radial coordinate, which means the transverse axis will be perpendicular to it. We see that the force is then applied along the transverse axis. Because this question is simple and we're given the angle, we don't need to calculate the psi angle. The weight is straight down, which means it's coming down at an angle of 30 degrees from the transverse axis. And the normal force is perpendicular to the tangent, which means it's coming in at an angle of 30 degrees from the radial axis. Let's write our equations of motion. First, the radial components. So on the left side, we have the radial component of the normal force, the radial component of the weight, and that's equal to the mass of the can multiplied by the radial acceleration. Let's solve for the normal force. Now we can write an equation for the transverse components. On the left side, we have the force, the transverse component of the normal force, which we just found before, and then we have the transverse component of the weight, and that is equal to mass multiplied by the transverse acceleration. Let's solve for the force, and that's our answer. Let's take a look at this example. In this question, we need to find the force required to move the cylinder along the slotted path. 
So as usual, our first step is to find the radial and transverse accelerations. Looking at the information given to us, we need to find the first and second derivatives of our radial coordinate. So let's do that. Remember, 1 over theta is the same as theta to the power of negative 1. Let's find the first time derivative. Now the second time derivative. So the question says we need to figure out the force when theta is equal to 180 degrees. We need to make sure we convert 180 degrees into radians before plugging it in. A rule of thumb, if a question doesn't say whether the radial coordinate is in radians or not, check to see if there is a trigonometric term in it, like sine or cosine. If it does, you don't need to convert degrees to radians, otherwise you do. Also, note that we're given the angular velocity and angular acceleration in the question. Let's plug in the values and solve. Now we can figure out the radial and transverse accelerations. First, the radial acceleration. Now, the transverse acceleration. Remember how we talked about the psi angle that sometimes we need to find? Well, this is a question where we need to find that. To see this visually, let's draw a free body diagram. So first, we draw the tangent line. Now, the psi angle gives us the angle between the radial line and the tangent line. Let's use the equation we learned to figure it out. So on top, we have the radial coordinate. On the bottom, we have the derivative of the radial coordinate with respect to theta. Remember, this is not a time derivative. Let's plug in theta, which is equal to 180 degrees, or in radians, it's pi. Let's simplify we got a negative value, which means we're going opposite to the positive sense of theta. So how does this value we found help us? For that, we need to draw the normal force. Remember, normal force is always perpendicular to the tangent line. If you look carefully, the angle between the transverse line and the normal force is equal to the angle between the radial line and the tangent line. If you extend the normal force upwards, you can see how this angle is the same. Let's draw the force applied to the can as well which completes our free body diagram. Now that we have the angle, we can finally write our equations of motion. First, for the radial components. We will assume forces to the left to be positive. So on the left side, we have the radial component of the normal force, and on the right side, we have the mass multiplied by the radial acceleration. Now an equation for transverse components. We will assume forces down to be positive. So we have the transverse component of the normal force, which we found before, plus the force being applied by the arm, and that's equal to mass times the transverse acceleration. We got a negative value, but that just means that instead of the force coming down from the top, as we drew on the diagram, it's coming from the bottom. And that's our answer. So far, we looked at a normal F equals MA question with cylindrical components, and another question where we had to calculate the psi angle. For our last question, let's look at an example where we consider the z-axis as well. In this question, we need to find the radial, transverse, and the z-forces exerted on the car by the track. So in simple terms, we're looking for fr, f theta, and fz. In this question, we're looking at the path of the roller coaster from this point to this point. Knowing this makes it easier to understand how the radial coordinate is represented. The radial coordinate for this question is given with respect to the z-axis, in other words, height. As always, we need to find the radial and transverse accelerations, but for this question, we also need the acceleration in the z-axis. So these are the equations for those, which means we have a few things to find before we can plug anything in. We will start off with the time derivatives of the radial coordinates. Now, we need to find the angular velocity and acceleration. We are given the angle with respect to the z-axis as well, so let's take the time derivatives. Now, for the z-axis derivatives. In the question, we are told that an angular motion of 1 rad per second is maintained constantly. So what if we substitute that value into our angular velocity? Then we can solve for the derivative of our z-component. In other words, the velocity in the z-direction. If we take the derivative of this again, we can get the acceleration in the z-direction. Since the velocity is constant, the acceleration will be zero. Now we're going to look at the instant when z equals 6 meters. And we found the velocity and acceleration, so let's plug them in into our equations. Now we can find the three accelerations. We will start with the radial acceleration. Remember to plug in the z velocity as well. Now for the transverse acceleration. Lastly, the acceleration in the z direction is zero. Let's draw our free body diagram. 
we have the force in the radial direction, the force in the transverse direction, the force in the z direction, and we have the weight. Let's write our equations of motion. First, for the radial direction. The only force we have in this direction is the radial force. So that's equal to mass times the radial acceleration. Let's solve for the radial force. Now, an equation for the transverse direction. Again, the only force in the transverse direction is the transverse force. So that's equal to the mass times the transverse acceleration. Lastly, let's write an equation for the z-axis forces. On the left side, we have the z-axis force along with the weight downwards, which is equal to mass times acceleration. But remember, the acceleration in the z-axis is zero. Let's solve for the force in the z-axis. Those are our answers. That should cover the types of problems you face in this chapter. I hope this video helped you gain a better understanding of equations of motion with cylindrical components. And if it did, please give a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and best of luck with your studies.